Hi all, Dr. Samantha Gutrera here for the Imagining a New We video blog, a video series designed to help history teachers and other history educators teach history in ways that are more meaningful, transformative, and inclusive for their students. Because Mondays are meaningful, I am doing these little videos on Monday mornings. Uh, maybe you want to join me for a cup of coffee. I have um, a Halloween-ish mug because I, I like a good theme and I am getting ready. Um, or at the end of the day or any point during the Week just for some kind of uh, like reflective practice. To, uh, I'm just going to bring up some ideas that maybe you want to reflect upon through the week. Um, and these are all ideas that I have found have been helpful for me to reflect upon, like who I am as a history educator. Uh, what am I doing with the narratives that I am teaching? What am I doing? Like, what is the space that I am allowing for in my classrooms? And um, and so everything that I'm sharing with you are things that like I have spent a lot of time thinking about. And I've said before, like I've said the last two weeks when I was thinking of putting this series together, I was like doing other research and I thought, no, like... <laughs> I did this work already for my book, Transforming the Canadian History Classroom, Imagining a New We, which I feel like I've been saying is out soon for years. <laughs> but like, like everyone should have it in their hands by the end of October, I hope. So <laughs> that's what we're working towards. Um, because this, because Wednesday is uh, Orange Shirt Day, um, I wanted to reflect on a couple things related to um, education uh, regarding the calls to action from the TRC. So, but also on Wednesday, which is actually like, um, Orange Shirt Day, I am interviewing the artist for the Orange Shirt Day Society's Orange Shirt this year. Patrick Hunter is an artist here in Toronto. He's Indigenous. He uh, is LGBTQ. He works really strongly with both like LGBT community as well as uh, like other networks of Indigenous artists. And he worked with um, like Phyllis, who wrote the Orange Shirt book um, for this year's um, this year's artwork, and it's just amazing. I should have brought it here and like showed it, but we're but we're wearing it when we talk. Um, you can order it on T. Uh, tsc.ca um, and it was an initiative of Rogers so like Rogers communications which is kind of cool so um, anyway orange shirt day if you don't have an orange shirt orange uh, order Patrick's shirt it's great so one of the things I want to reflect upon I want to reflect again on two different quotes like I did the last couple weeks and one is Something that um, dub poet, Jamaican-Canadian dub poet Dubai Young said at a 2016 event um, put on by Historica Canada called An Evening Celebrating Black Women in Canada. And this was such an amazing event. You can see a lot of videos of it online. I've linked below. Um, it was such an amazing event. Like everyone I was there together just felt like there was an element of spirit in the room that I have not felt in any other room related to like history education ever. And that is actually really something important to think about. Like does, does like how, how do we think about like, like spirit and community and like passion when we're teaching and learning Canadian history? Anyway, that's that's kind of a separate conversation. But during her like 15 minute little speech, um, she said something like, and I'll put the link below. So I'm paraphrasing. She's like homophobia, transphobia, sexism, racism. All of those things are based in a lack of self-awareness. And like that's really interesting because usually when we think of things like homophobia and sexism and racism, it we like think about it as a person or a system um, discriminating against others, right? Like we think of it as an external thing. But what she was saying is that it's a lack of self-awareness. And that's so interesting to think about, about how all of our narratives are so interwoven together that when you are engaging in homophobic or sexist or racist or transphobic actions, there is an element of this, this way of constructing identity that that you aren't connecting with yourself. And that has really, really stuck with me. And I pair that with Métis elder Maria Campbell, who spoke at a 2017 event. That recording is not available online, so um, I can't 
link to that, although I can like link to the announcement that she spoke, but I can't link to the original thing. And what she said was, when you're learning history as, as settlers, you need to understand how what brought your family to this country was influenced by colonialism and imperialism. And like, that's so interesting because I, you know, I'm white, I'm red as white. People would never like very rarely dispute that I am a Canadian. Um, but I actually don't know the push and pull factors that brought like my Italian family to this country. I actually don't know how long my French Canadian family has been in this country. And I don't know what factors brought them to immigrate to Canada. But, but when she said that, I was like, those stories are also interwoven with things about colonialism, imperialism, class, race, gender, like all of these histories are together. And so when, so really in, in enacting colonial education, it is also about lack of self-awareness because like we aren't looking at how colonialism affects our own histories of migration. And what she said was, understand your own histories because if you don't do that you are doing a disservice to your ancestors and it's like yeah like it is a lack of self-awareness that can then bring in these these really dangerous and violent um uh systems of oppression and sometimes those systems are like you know through curriculum and through our practice and through our enactment which is why i'm bringing it up sometimes it's much bigger but like we can bring not that we know everything but like just the fact that we don't know everything we can bring that into our classrooms even more and i say this in relationship to orange shirt day because the trc is really clear that like yes we should teach about residential schools but that isn't enough to answer the calls to action. What we need to do is to, to teach more about colonial education, teach more about indigenous peoples, and we teach more about and with indigenous epistemologies, uh, indigenous ways of thinking. And this isn't just like identify your spirit animal, like, because, you know, like that's a, a kind of a problematic activity. And if that's a surprise to you, like that's fine. I can put some links below about why that is a problematic activity. But it's like if we really wanted to engage in a history education that does the work of decolonizing our own understanding of Canada and the Canadian past and the Canadian present, we need to do that work of coming to understand differently than we know now. And that is about being more self-aware. That is about understanding our own histories. And that is understanding that we're not coming from a place of expertise, but rather a place of exploration and, um, and like not knowing together. Because so often I like, again, and I put myself in this category, this is not, <laughs> this is not me like you all do this. <laughs> like I, I'm reflecting on my own like thought process when I have run a workshop for students or I'm putting together professional development for teachers. It's so easy to be like, I don't know this, so I'm not comfortable teaching it, especially related to things like indigeneity, um, and I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm just going to like stay away from it. And what I'm doing is like I'm staying away from an element of myself as someone that is a settler that is problematic. So I guess my reflection prompt for this week, if you're interested in that, is like, what are the elements of colonialism and imperialism that are part of your life and your life history? What are the elements of self-awareness that you can bring into your classroom to recognize is like tied in with who you are as an educator? And that sometimes can be that can tie in so much that doesn't allow room for others? And how can we then move forward with answering the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, not just by like adding in residential school histories to our, you know, 
1880 to 1920 histories, which is what I've seen when I've done some curriculum review, but rather how does like that element of coloniality and indigenous ways of understanding history, how can that be brought into our classrooms in a way that really challenges the like the fundamental way we think about the Canadian past? And I'm just going to use a quick example of that because that those are big ideas. And like I spend a lot of time like walking and thinking about it because I find like those are ideas that I really need movement and I can't just like be sitting in front of a computer. I'll, I'll bring you an example of how like our whole structure of understanding can be switched to be able to allow more space for that. So I put on Twitter, oh gosh, maybe in August, a question about like, Canadian historians or educators, what is an artifact that you think is like quintessentially Canadian or like represents the Canadian past, something like that. And I had a lot of really interesting responses, a lot of them having to do with like, like violence and residential schools, um, which is really interesting. And I can talk about that in another video. But then um, this really amazing woman by the name of Georgina Riel, who is a uh, is an educational consultant um, for Riel Consulting. She said like, well, first, <laughs> my people, um, uh, she's an indigenous woman, my people don't think of like artifacts because we think of the past as this ongoing living thing so we don't make this distinction between past and present and artifact and not artifact like these are just like living things in our life and so I realized that just by asking the question and assuming that there are these like artifacts from the past that we can learn from I'm already projecting a view of history onto my view of history that precludes histories related to indigenous people, indigenous epistemology, so indigenous ways of knowing, indigenous spirituality, like, and that was a lack, a lack of self-knowledge, like a lack of understanding of how I am bound in with, um, with colonial systems of thought. Like it was such an interesting conversation and uh, we're going to be talking for the video series, I think in the next couple months, which is great. Like it was so wonderful to make that connection. So anyway, those are a lot of big ideas, but hopefully um, maybe like useful in thinking about Orange Shirt Day and just remember like it isn't this big celebration as much as like a recognition of trauma and grief and like really allowing us to be reflective of who and what we are in Canada and on this land and what our responsibilities are. And that does take us understanding ourselves 